What's in the box? Oh wait, it's a Tau Barracuda. Anyways, <laughs> come check this bad boy out in today's Forge World unboxing. Spiky bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to the longwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today. What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear here again today with a fantastic Forge World unboxing. We've got the Tau Barracuda, and this is, uh, I guess, the second edition one because there was already one coming out. I guess it's got a fancy name now. It's the AX-5-2 Multi-Roll Fighter, but, you know, all I want to say is Barracuda. <laughs> this is a cool-looking kit, and it's very exciting because this is the first time they actually notated that and left... Uh, recesses for magnets in this. Now they did it with the Mastodon, which I discovered when I was putting it together, but it wasn't notated in the instruction manual. This is the first time they've actually come out and said, hey guys, check this out, and check it out, we did. So let's jump into this bad boy. Now this is how stuff's coming now. Like they ain't taking no chances. Like they are packing stuff legit. Like it comes in bubble wrap. It's got the instruction manual, got your flying stem and flying base somewhere here. So boom, boom, nothing new there. We got an instruction manual, very cool stuff, of course. And then they come with this hot working with resin guide, which usually has a signature on it. I guess that's when it was packed or when it was created to 1916. <laughs> Interesting there. And then all of this stuff as well. Wow, that's weird. It's actually... No, that's something else. That's a different kit right there. I was like, yeah, that's weird. That's actually it right there. But anyway, so this tells you how to work with resin. It also gives you a, a uh, checker number. There's also a batch number on here. Uh, this is the date, which uh, it's a code for the date, believe it or not. They won't tell you that, but I will. But that's basically how it works there. So um, if they ever ask you, if you ever have a problem, which sometimes happens, they're usually super good and super easy to fix any problems that might arise. They'll just ask you for a couple of pieces of information. Now, once you open up the bubble wrap here, you get a bag, dun dun dun, and a main fuselage assembly, which is kind of different from how it was. Uh, I think the whole thing came assembled the last time, but it's cool to see all of this. Now, before we jump into these parts here, I wanna go over the instruction manual to kind of prep you uh, for basically what's in here and how cool it really is. So once you flip this open, you could see kind of the general overview. They're obviously doing it in the computers. That is a profile view from a computer render right there. Now when you open it up, you take a look here. It's the standard color guide. You know, uh, yellow is your contact area. Green is press for assembly, reverse angle assembly options. Shin to be removed, also known as sprue gates. Component highlight, do not glue and insert. Okay. So here is the parts breakdown, the exploded view, so to speak. Now, what I like about this is, again, they leave room for magnets in a lot of areas here. And they even tell you, recessed areas in the weapons and turret can be used to mount magnets up to four, eight by two millimeter, 30, uh, 37, wow, six by two millimeter, six, four by one millimeter, and one, or in four, eight by two in size. So that kind of tells you what you need to put this kit together. Because remember, you're, you're mating left to right. Now, if you want to simplify that process a little bit, you can use 10 strips, cut down 10 and put 10 on one side. And of course, you don't have to worry, even worry about polarity. If you can find a nice flat surface to attach the tin to, we have a how to magnetize, uh, I think the Storm Raven a tutorial on this channel. You can check that one out for a better idea of what I'm talking about. It does require 10 strips to cut down to 10, which go for about 15 to 20 bucks because um, it used an AC repair, I guess. That's what the guy told me at Lowe's. I was like, why are these so much, dog? And he's like, yo, everybody's got to have those for AC repair. I was like, okay, fine, whatever. I need them, so it's all good. But they are ginormous. They're almost like hedge hedge trimmers. Like they are they are big and they get in there and they get some serious torque on that tin for you, but they need to keep it straight and flat. Anyways, back to the Barracuda. All sorts of different weapon components. You've got things you can switch out here. For instance, 
uh, what is this, number 14 and 17. You've got the long barreled cyclic ion blasters, or you can go with the heavy burst cannon. These are auto targeting. We'll talk about that in our rules breakdown. But then you've got all sorts of other stuff like, um, the, of course, the long barrel burst cannons, Barracuda ion cannon, Swiss strike railgun. You got different parts up here for that. We just named those three. Then you've got missile seeker missile racks. You can, you know, you can assemble the underneath uh, with the hatches closed, hatches open, and two and two split halves to show the gear. Or you can do a rack of uh, uh, seeker missiles, which. I mean, this is just a phenomenal looking kit here. And then of course, you've got your gun drones here, which have two different options. We just talked about that. Then you've got your decoy drone launcher uh, thingy here in the back, all your fairings, your stabilizers, uh, your underslung, what is this, 26, the miss, just a normal missile pod, which used to be part of the main fuselage of the older kit. So just a quick breakdown of the assembly. You've got all the different pieces here, all your air surfaces basically in your engine. Uh, blocks, which of course you can keep off and paint down separate. Then you've got the two piece long barrel burst cannon assembly, the heavy burst cannon for the front, and there's your magnet recess. It basically shows you snap in there with a bunch of different main cannon versions there. And then here is the side guns, the wing drone guns, where you could have the cyclic ion blaster or the burst cannon assembly. Both have really good weapon for profiles. I think this one has six shots, this one has three shots, one strength seven, AP four, I believe, one is strength six, but more shots, so et cetera, et cetera. And then here's the little thing here with the landing gear. You can assemble this with one secret missile showing, or you can have the rack of two secret missiles, like it's sliding down and getting ready to launch off. And then right there is all your gear. And it gives you examples for how you can assemble it kind of all together right there. So this deceptively simple looking kit, it only has nine assembly steps there, but it's a very cool looking kit nonetheless. Now let's break down the parts. Of course, here is the big fuselage piece right here. Fantastic looking detailing, no bubbles or anything down here in the grills. And then you've got the exhaust and everything, the recesses for the uh, drone, and then your engine covers here. And then right here, you can see all the places that the magnets go. So you've got your places for your main gear, your places for your weapons, this is where your missile pods go right here. You can snap them in. I don't know if they're gonna have different weapon options coming out, but you might wanna magnetize them nonetheless. And then your main cannon goes right here. So all of it is completely magnetized. Now, once you build out all of the uh, uh, wing surfaces, it starts to get a bigger profile. Of course, that bigger profile is about the same as the old kit right here. So you can see even more grills and things like that when they don't have to sculpt it by hand, it can put even more detail into this kit. So these basically lock in using this peg and slot system right there. You can kind of see it. it basically locks in right there. Of course, I'm not gonna remove the flash. All of this stuff I buy if I don't keep it, which eh, I, really, I really keep any of this uh, stuff here unless it's like kind of one of the armies I'm working on or, or playing at the current time we send out to our patreon supporters uh, usually the quarterly ones because this particular kit right here goes for I want to say it's uh, 80 pounds which is roughly hundred and five dollars I think right now depending on which way the, the pounds swing in um, but again you know it's something that not everybody can always afford with their level of support so I like to send these guys out every uh, quarter or so let's jump in and get a little bit closer with some of these weapons. So there's the missile pod. And like I said, it doesn't seem like you need to magnetize that right now uh, because it's the only option, but, and it, it kind of locks in right there too, kind of around the lip. And then it's got those slots as well as the magnet holes to get to keep it from torquing. But you might want to because you don't know what else Forge Rule is gonna come out with in the near future. Of course, they're coming out with that new Imperial Armor book but we haven't seen it yet, so who knows? Anywho, so here's some, uh, here's the main weapons. So you've got your main ion and there's some little doodads that are the stabilizers there. So there's the stabilizers for that as well as the drone antennas uh, that go in that as well. And those basically lock on right there and kind of stick out to be stabilizers, so to speak. Uh, here's your heavy burst cannon and the 
don't know what the rail for that is. Here's the other burst cannons, and these are the two-parters. Remember that they lock in over top of, oh no, wait, that is that one right there. And then these are the two-parters for the, here they are. So this is the two-parters, the ones on the sides are the two-parters for the drone ones, which is the auto-targeting ones, which you can see they lock into the drone pots, uh, spots right there. And here's the Swiss Strike Railgun, very big looking uh, gun right there. It's cyclic ion for the gun drones as well. Some of the engine parts right here look very well detailed with slots and everything, no bubbles or anything like that, all the grills. Uh, there's the drone covers and the drone itself so it's a single piece right there again it can be magnetized why is it magnetized there has to be another piece here they are that's why so you can switch out the weapons without magnetizing the weapons you just magnetize the drone itself so it would lock together and then also swivel inside of this little joint right here which i can't lock into because again flash but that's just how that one works so there's most of the weapons here's the drone the decoy drone launcher thing right here and also it looks like you might want to magnetize this because you never know what uh, they'll come out with next so that bottom might change I guess so to speak who, who knows don't really know but if you're magnetized and you're modular it's all good there's that secret missile rack which goes along with where is it right here which is this is the seeker missile and then this little piece basically goes right there and you can form a little rack underneath uh, the main fuselage itself. And then there's the magnets as well because the way these doors work is you can basically, it forms a two part assembly, which I believe goes like, uh, let's see, that would set down. So that needs to be cantered out. So there's another piece that's involved here. Oh yeah, these. So there's two different door pieces. So this is the door, where's the door? Okay, so this is the door if you just keep the door closed. Easy peasy, right? And then this is the door, these are the two parts of the door if you open the door. So these would form a basically like a two part kind of uh, kind of kit, right? To, oh, actually this is the gear. Yep, this is the gear. So those are the gear pieces. So these are the two parts. So if you open this, it looks like, hmm, am I missing pieces or did I put something down already? Nope. Interesting. Well, let's take a look. So the left sinker missile, oh, okay, it's just two pieces. So they lock onto each other, which would be the 33 and 28, 33 and 28. That is not 33. This is 33. Oh, okay. I did have it right. So basically this locks in with this here somewhere. I don't know exactly how, but that's what the instructions say. So apparently those go together and then you can put the rack of the little missiles as well on, on the bottom of that. And then this, oh, it's a two piece. Okay. So these are the two pieces if you don't close the hatch itself 31 32 32 there's three 32 pieces and 31 oh okay that's why so these actually go together if you want to close the gear hatch these go together to form a system uh, i guess something like this i'm actually not sure now but apparently these go together to form a system and close or you would set them to open and then you would put the gear in there. And speaking of gear, here is the gear itself, which are the landing pad, the landing skids and the struts all together. A great, great detailed, very miniaturized version of what we've seen in the past, especially if you think about the plastic devil fish gear. This is way more computer designed and more realistic, I feel like. And then the two vertical stabilizers on the back of the plane. So that for the most part is the kit. Nine easy steps, right? Super easy. Now, if we take a look at the actual rules breakdown for this particular kit here, it's 175 points, which I think is, is pretty worth it to be quite honest. 11, 11, 10, hull points three, agility four. So it's basically got a 50, 50 chance to do those quick type maneuvers if you're playing with uh, the Death of Skies rules. 
Now, when it comes to special rules, you've got the Barracuda Heavy Burst Cannon stock. You've got two auto-targeting long barrel burst cannons, which the profiles are over here. One twin-length missile pod and one Barracuda Dispersion Shield, which is basically that drone thing in the back. And the Dispersion Shield is a vulnerable save of six um, against penetrating hits and a five up against glancing hits. So that's kind of cool. You don't even have to jink. If you do jink, you get plus one because you're an agile flyer down to a maximum of three. So that's kind of cool. Now remember, you can buy some Tau upgrades to give you plus one to your cover save, but you would have to. Um, I, yeah, I, yeah, because you go down to a maximum of three. I guess you could argue where that would stack because that would go on top of it. But from the Agile Flyer rule, you cannot go lower than three for that regard. I'll leave that to the rules lawyers on um, whether you could go to an actual two up. I, I'm 50-50 on it, to be honest. The auto-targeting auto is actually pretty cool because it ignores any cover saves, uh, bonuses provided by the supersonic and supersonic special rule just means that you can flat out from, I think it's 18 to 36 instead of the 12 to 24 that you normally can do. Um, Jinx special rules, as well as any provided by moving flat out, which not everything gets that. And that's a very special case by case basis. Now over here, special rules, supersonic, we just talked about that. It can deep strike. It is also an agile flyer, which we already talked about. Strafe and runs, it's got plus one ballistic skill to hit. Depending on what you're doing, it is technically uh, a strike fighter. So that may or may not be good. In most cases, it's definitely good to have a strafe and run. Now you can add on a four seeker missiles. You can take stuff from the battle uh, systems list in a codex Tau. You can also upgrade it to an ion cannon or the swift strike railgun, which is pretty good. It's strength 10, AP 1, heavy 1. It's only 36 inch, but you're a flyer, so I feel like that's not an issue. <laughs> Barracuda ion cannon is strength 7, AP 3, pretty much normal, with three shots there. And the heavy burst cannon is strength 6, AP 4, heavy 6. Now, the long barrel burst cannons are strength 5, AP 5, heavy 6. And you can upgrade those to be the cyclic ion blaster versions of them, which are strength 7, AP 4, but only three shots. So it kind of depends on what you're going up against. If you're going to be strafing ground targets, that might be better, to be quite honest, than the strength 5, AP 5. But against most vehicles in the air, that's still pretty solid. But I could make the argument that strength 7 is pretty solid. So you can drop stuff like Storm Ravens. And eh, 50-50. It is what it is. Now, this counts as a heavy support choice in a Codex Tau army. Heavy support's pretty stacked at this point. You know, you got a lot of good heavy support choices. So, whether you take it as that, it's hard to say. But I think all around, these are pretty good rules that we will see this bad boy on the table, depending on, you know, uh, who's actually playing Death from the Skies, who isn't, and stuff like that. But for a lot of Tau, flyer, tau players, this is a superior flyer to, you know, the Razor Shark or the, um, whatever, like the Sky Bomber doodad thingy. I, I don't really like that uh, particular uh, vehicle there. I think I think the Barracuda for its price is probably pretty solid, and I could see a lot of Tau players wanting to field this in a more fluffy, not completely over the top, sit in a corner, shoot kind of list. <laughs> so that's it for our Forge World unboxing of the brand new Tau Barracuda for, uh, Fighter. I guess it's not really brand new. I guess it's been out for like six months, but I feel like it's brand new because I'm touching it for the first time now. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post game wrap up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on the longward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.